Already there is evidence from Western Bartonshire and Clack Manager that the use of techniques such as uh, the use of systematic phonics coupled with one-to-one -one support is effective in developing basic liter literacy skills amongst many youngsters who have previously experienced barriers to the acquisition of these skills. Glasgow and North Lanarkshire have set up nurture classes which provide support to both youngsters and parents dealing directly with the fact that many children in the most disadvantaged areas lack the tools to discuss and express their emotions. In Glasgow, every school has a literacy champion with responsibility for leading literacy development within their establishment. A program is being rolled out in early years establishments so that staff are better able to support children with poor language skills and assist them with language acquisition. Ultimately, we need to decide what we want our schools and early education establishments to prioritize. There are a variety of ways in which educationalists can measure success or failure. We have league tables of attainment, systems of inspection, and a variety of other mechanisms which provide information about the performance of a school, a nursery, or an education authority. If our priority is that every child who could be taught to read and write should be supported to do so, and if the development of these skills were to, were to be regarded as a core indicator of success or failure within our school system, not just in the most deprived areas, but right across the country. It would galvanize an education system faced with competing objectives and pay particular, to pay particular attention to literacy. But it's clear also from the report that literacy cannot just be dealt with in the schools or in the nurseries by educationalists. We must mobilize the resources right across the board, coordinating them effectively so that those most vulnerable children, the children most at risk of disadvantage, get the support they need to make the most of their lives. And that, I think, is the core message of the Literacy Commission report. Delivering basic literacy skills can never be the only objective or criteria against which schools or educational establishments should be judged. As the report itself makes, makes clear, we need to move children beyond basic literacy to help them fully engage with modern society and the workplace. The ability to apply knowledge, understanding and skills in areas other than the one in which they were acquired is vital. We need critical thinkers, people who can gather, analyse and use information in new ways for a vast variety of purposes. Literacy-related skills can be a passport to success for the individual and a vital resource for employers. The report calls for a national strategy to set priorities for assisting children to move beyond basic literacy by improving standards and standards of comprehension. Now, I very much hope that the government will adopt this and the other recommendations in the report. I've had early indications from, from the minister that he is receptive to many of the recommendations in, in the report, and I understand that he met members of, of the commission this morning. But the message I would want to give him is that it's not just about the curriculum for ex excellence and the way in which things are ordered and organized in the school. He has got to work with his colleagues across the portfolios and actually make this a national priority. Literacy has to become a key priority, the top educational priority for Scotland and a top priority for, for, for this, this government. Now, given the importance of workplace learning in tackling illiteracy amongst adults, I hope the literacy action plan called, in, called for in the motion will also incorporate a strategy for supporting and encouraging workplace learning and that trade union organisations will be amongst the stakeholders involved in discussions around that. In the past, those who left school unable to read and write rarely got an opportunity later to acquire those skills. In recent years, the STUC and its affiliates through Scottish Union Learning have stepped in through partnership with employers in training for employees and as providers of everyday skills activities to assist with workplace learning. Much of this work has been supported through the Scottish Union Learning Fund, and I hope this remains in place beyond the current round, which ends in March 2011. The SNP amendment, which highlights the importance placed on developing literacy in curriculum for excellence, is a constructive addition, provided that we are not saying that literacy can only be taken forward in the context of cur curriculum for excellence. This is one route, one aspect of, of, of the message of, 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 of the, the report, but it certainly needs to go, to go well, well beyond that. 
I think the Liberal Democrat addendum, which reminds us that illiteracy is not exclusively an urban phenomenon, is, 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 is worthwhile as well. Although I'd point out the report suggests that there is no instance in Scotland of a school serving a poor neighbourhood that achieves results comparable to those of schools in the more affluent areas. Regrettably, areas where socioeconomic disadvantage are concentrated are typically the same areas, overwhelmingly, although not exclusively in urban areas, where we find the highest levels of functional illiteracy. The Commission sees the central purpose of testing as the provision of diagnostic information about students who are struggling to assist them in working out what steps should be taken to help them progress. I'm not sure that's consistent with the Conservative Amendment, which seems more concerned with summative assessment and the segregation of children at primary seven into academic and vocational streams. The Commission's version of Back to Basics, placing emphasis on the acquisition of basic and higher literacy skills, is much preferable to the reintroduction of the 11 plus, so Labour will not be supporting the Conservative Amendment this evening. Happy to do so. Mr. Fraser. I'm very grateful to Mr. McNulty for giving way on that point. I'm a little bit confused. Uh, at the Labour position this morning, given that Mr McNulty and all his colleagues on the Labour benches voted for exactly the same wording uh, as is in our amendment today on the 7th of January 2009. Mr McNulty. Well, I think perhaps Mr Fraser should read carefully the Literacy Commission report, which I think makes an overwhelming case against the approach which I, I think uh, Mr Fraser and his, his colleagues are see seeking to adopt. In concluding, presiding officer, let me turn from literacy to numeracy. We know less about how to prove, improve standards of numeracy than we do about literacy. And it's a matter of concern that many teachers feel less comfortable <coughs> about their own numeracy as opposed to literacy skills. In a global market, companies and individuals face a huge challenge from those competitors whose education system lays great emphasis on the acquisition of numeracy skills. It was not part of the Literacy Commission to consider numeracy, but I would argue it's of equal importance. I would urge ministers, possibly in the context of taking forward the Curriculum for Excellence, to ask experts for advice on the development and dissemination of numeracy skills and report back to the Parliament. The socioeconomic factors associated with high levels of functional literacy are in all likelihood, in all likelihood produce poor, in, in, poor numeracy too. But we have much less evidence about how to overcome this barrier or indeed boost standards of numeracy more generally. The core message today from Labour is we want to see these recommendations taken forward. We want to see a literacy action plan taken forward by the government in partnership with local authorities and others, and we believe that literacy should become the government's key, key priority. I look forward to hearing the contribution from members in what I hope will be a serious as well as consensual debate, and I move the motion in my name. Thank you, President.